Hello, everyone. Welcome out into the courtyard here at Bethany. Blessed to have you with me today. It is a beautiful day. It's warming up, getting a little bit more humid. And there's a few clouds in the area, but that's all right. We'll see what happens over the next few hours. Uh, this week, our gospel returns to kind of the more normal lectionary, if you will. Um, we will be talking about John chapter 6. We continue there. We're at the end of the chapter. And once again, Jesus refers to himself as the bread of life. <clears throat> Excuse me. But there's also this incredible statement in the middle of Jesus' comments in which he says, it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. I always found that to be a little bit harsh. I mean, the flesh is a part of who we are, um, made by God. So the idea that the flesh itself is useless, um, it's always kind of harsh to me. I, I've never completely worked my way through that. Um, but today, actually, I want to stay more focused on the first half of that statement, the idea that it is the spirit that gives us life. Um, you know, we actually use that exact terminology in funerals. We refer to the spirit, to the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son. We use that terminology in the liturgy during a funeral, the idea that the spirit is the giver of life. It comes from this exact gospel where Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit that way. So I want to take a few minutes today and kind of talk about the ways in which the Holy Spirit has been described through the years. Um, it, it's, it's had different definitions, different, different descriptions through the years, and it's kind of interesting to take a look at the Holy Spirit itself. Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the giver of life, so keep that in mind. Over the years, um, in Greek philosophy, there was this idea that the Spirit was the Sophia, the wisdom, if you will, of God. So that was an interesting way. It's not a surprise that philosophers would see the Holy Spirit as the wisdom of God, the, the intelligence of God, if you will, the logic of God working its way through the world and impacting us as it goes. And I suppose if you think about it, um, you know, we do talk about the Holy Spirit having an influence on things such as um, schooling and education or science or medicine. And so in that sense, the idea of the Holy Spirit as the Sophia, the wisdom of God, makes perfect sense. Those were the Greek philosophers. And by the way, the Sophia having a feminine pronoun to it. So kind of interesting there. Um, you also could take a look at the ancient Hebrew. In the Hebrew language, in Judaism, the Holy Spirit actually was often seen as the ruach, or the breath, the wind that comes from God. And in that sense, um, especially the breath, I always think that that is such a powerful thought, that it is God's breath that comes into our lungs to give us that life. Um, and then when we're sitting outside on a day like today, you may notice that some of the leaves are very gently wafting just a little bit in the wind, that it is God's breath that breathes around us, coming straight from within God and into the world and into us as we speak this day. So the Hebrew understanding of the Spirit being the ruach, the breath, of God that is breathed into us as we take our first breaths, and every breath we take thereafter comes from God first. That's an interesting way to look at the Holy Spirit. And then there's the Aramaic version, the paraclete, the counselor, the guide, the one who is a mediator or intercessory for us, um, the idea that the Spirit acts on our behalf before God and teaches us and guides us. The paraclete, or the Aramaic way of seeing the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot of ways in which the Holy Spirit has been described through the years, but I think quite possibly the most powerful is Jesus saying that the Spirit is the giver 
of life. And I want to make sure that we all understand the idea being that it's not necessarily that we don't have life from God first, but that the Spirit is what enhances that life, makes our life worthwhile, moves us forward in life so that we can grow to a new day and a new life each and every single day. You know, we talk about that in Christian circles, that every day we are a new life. Every day is a new day. We are resurrected to something new each and every day. That is the work of the Holy Spirit within us, raising us up to something new each and every day, granting us new life each and every day. The Holy Spirit, the giver of life. Interesting thoughts. I look forward to worshiping with you this weekend and preaching more about Jesus' comments, the Spirit, the giver of life. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks be to God. Amen.